One of the main reasons why DJI is by far the number one producer of consumer drones is its reliability and its excellent marketing. With a huge update for the Mini 3 Pro released on June 30, 2022, DJI has not only added several very interesting features, but has also addressed and partially solved all the weak points mentioned by users on social media. And all of this in a very short time. Hats off to DJI. The new RC controller of the Mini 3 with a built-in screen is now compatible with the Mavic 3, and this is excellent news for many users, including me. I think this controller is a joy to use and makes life much simpler. For professional and semi-pro videographer and photographer, it makes sense to own both models as the Mini 3 is very suitable for urban shooting and short trips. So the possibility to carry just a single controller and no cable is massive. To connect the Mavic 3 to the RC controller of the Mini 2, turn the controller and then the Mavic 3. On the DJI Fly screen, tap on Connection Guide. In the window Select Aircraft Model, the Mavic 3 is now available. Click on the icon. A tiny firmware update of approximately one minute is needed. Once done, we need to pair the drone to the computer. We can do it on the same screen by tapping at the bottom on the link Enable to connect aircraft, then press and hold the power button of the aircraft for a few seconds until it starts to beep, and then tap on Pair. When going back to using the Mini 3 Pro, repeat the same procedure, but this time there is no need to pair the drone. As some of you know, I'm not sponsored by any manufacturer. I push the equipment to the limits, and if I find an issue, I am very vocal about it. One of the main issues I found in the Mini 3 is the extremely poor signal, at least in some units and in some geographical location. In my case, the transmission was so bad to consider the drone practically useless, but I was confident that DJI would improve things soon. Let's try the range in this area where I do all of my tests. Prior to this update, with the RC controller, I could not reach more than 400 meters in any direction, an extremely poor performance. With the traditional RC and one controller, the signal was only slightly better. Let's start in a direction where there are very strong interference, due to plenty of big telecommunication aerials. I can only reach 430 meters, a tiny improvement compared to the previous one. In the same direction, I try setting the transmission manually to 2.4 and 5.8 GHz, without any luck. Actually, the results are even worse with the setting in the automatic dual band. This time, let's try a different direction with lower interference. Now things are much better. The aircraft keep going and going with an excellent signal. I get to 1000 meters a kilometer and I still have full white bars. I could probably go much farther, but I'm not interested in flying any farther than that. It is against regulations and can be dangerous. But let's try this time with the Mavic 3 with the same RC controller. In both directions, the signal is excellent up to 1000 meters. So, a huge improvement in the distance of the transmission for the Mini 3, at least for my unit, although it seems to be still very affected by interference. Much better than before, but still some work needed. I also noticed that the issue with interference is mostly due to the drone itself, not to the controller, as the Mavic 3 behaved perfectly with the RC controller. Before the update, the RAW file of the Mini 3 had a very complex vignette. It was relatively easy to adjust the outer one, although some issues remained with color banding when stitching panorama. But a very annoying point was an area of much higher luminosity in the center of the image, with a tendency to a magenta cast. 
It was so bad that I started using only JPEG files. Although it must be said that the JPEG files in the Mini 3 are excellent. When the Mavic 3 was released, it also had a huge magenta cast towards the edges, but it was fixed by a firmware update. After the update, the outer vignette is less pronounced, and the area with the magenta cast has disappeared. Excellent! Before the release of this update, I experienced severe issues with crash shadows in this in a like footage, and also some unusual flickering, especially in low light, due to the HDR mode based on dual ISO. According to the release note, the quality of this in a like footage in low light has been improved, and the issue with flicker has been solved. The Mini 3 is the only prosumer drone on the market able to shoot video and photo in vertical format. A lot of buyers of this model rely on this format to use on social media like Instagram and TikTok. This update had the possibility to use the three intelligent flight modes of Focus Track in vertical format Spotlight, Point of Interest, and Attic Track. This is a massive feature as these modes are extremely powerful and also include the possibility of tracking and the very popular follow me. Normally, to enter focus track, all we need to do is to draw a box around the target and after a couple of seconds, a small window appears with the three modes to choose from. But as you can see, the icon to get into vertical mode is not active. We need to shift into vertical shooting before selecting our target on the screen. Now we are ready to go. With Spotlight we can move in all directions while keeping the camera pointed on the target. In point of interest, the aircraft will rotate at the desired speed and direction, again keeping the camera on the target, while we can use the two sticks of the remote controller to get closer or farther away or to raise or descend. In a tick track, we can follow a target autonomously. In this case, we lose the target beyond the tree for a second, but the software is able to find it immediately. Vertical shooting is now also available for quick shots. Here I tried Drony and Helix. Personally, I find them interesting only in models that don't have focus track, like the Mini 2 or the Hotel Nano Plus. With the Mini 3, I rather suggest getting used to the three focus track modes. They are much more powerful and flexible. The new update adds several new functionalities to the hyperlapse mode. It is now possible to shoot them in vertical mode. There is also the possibility to choose a frequency of one shot every two seconds, while before the minimum was one every three. Before the update, the camera was very slow with, when buffering photos. This was especially evident when shooting five photos in automatic exposure bracketing. The buffering is much faster now, and this opens up the possibility of shooting continuously a photo every two seconds. According to the release note, in hyperlapse mode, the stability and the dynamic range have been improved. As some of you know, I'm a big fan of hyperlapses, but I have not yet received the ND filters for the Mini 3, which are crucial for hyperlapses. I will obviously make an in-depth video about them once I will finally receive the filters. In the settings, there is now a USB mode available. When it is selected, the aircraft disables image transmission in order to reduce heating and therefore be able to copy files for an extended time. During video recording, continuous autofocus is now supported. The indicator of the battery level and the display of the compass have been optimized. Click on this link to watch my beginner guide to the Mini 3 Pro. And don't forget to hit the like button if you find this video interesting. Thank you.